Who knows how long I've loved you? You know I love you still. First time Barb and I met Sandy, she was wearing a tool belt and work clothes. She was there ready to build a huge outdoor deck that Mark had designed for our mother's home in Iowa. I learned very quickly who was in charge. As I am sure Sandy would have said if she were in this room with us at this point, Fred, you can sit down now. Your role is completed, and you said more than what is necessary. I want us all to hear from others I have known, and Fred, the presenters are capable of introducing themselves. It was classic Sandy Abel. She ignored her own situation, focused on helping someone else, even when she was experiencing the most difficult phase of her life. What an example of internal strength, integrity, and security. What an example of acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly. Sandy left enormous footprints, footprints that we would do well to follow. I remember about Sandy and, and treasured one of the many things was her wonderful ability to come up with, with acronyms. A proposal was not complete unless it had an acronym. And, you know, it didn't have to actually fit exactly but if it was quick and punchy, she was happy with it. Sandy had a huge influence on my career and on my life. I knew her as a mentor, a colleague, and a friend. She could be tough as nails. She also had a soft side. She was a generous mentor who taught me a great deal about being a scholar and an advisor. She was also my friend with whom I celebrated life's successes and adventures. Sandy was the kind of friend every person should have in their life. She had a clarity and presence that went straight to the heart of me. Whether we were talking about husbands, research, teaching, or her joy in Luke's accomplishments. She had a wild sense of humor, was sly and sarcastic, yet delivered in a deadpan face with a twinkle in the eye and a little quirk on the corner of her mouth as she watched to see when I would get it. <laughs> she was not just my professor and advisor, but a dear friend to me. I hope that as I read this, you can hear her voice as I do every time I read it. Meredith, you've not asked for advice, but I'm going to give it anyway. <laughs> that statement I know all of us have heard at some point in time from her. And I asked Mark if I could wear this today because the first time I saw it in the store, I thought about how much it represents an important part of what made Sandy Sandy, her essence and her sandiness. This pen makes me think of all the times when Sandy acted outside of her responsible woman roles, what we used to call her good girl side, as academic, scholar, teacher, mentor, parent, and wife. Sandy had a mind of her own. It was always hard to buy her gifts, because if she didn't like what you bought, she would come right out and say so. Uh, my mom and I both really like Simon and Garfunkel, which that said kind of dates my mom, but oh well. <laughs> um, so on the way back, we'd turn on my iPod and we'd listen through all the Simon and Garfunkel that I had on there. And, there were some songs that she knew better than I did, and some songs that I knew better than she did, but we uh, we were pretty able to sing all of the songs, I think. Um, and I want to send my love to Paul and to Emily. Uh, today's events are a testament to your remarkable daughter. We're so glad you could join us and experience the difference she made in the lives of, her, of everyone who knew her.